Thea this morning. Um, I ran into a friend of mine this week. His name is Mike. He's a preacher, actually, and he's a preacher in... Uh, I've known him for a number of years. He, was, he reminded me uh, when I saw him of... I saw him uh, one time when we were preaching a number of years back, and he was in a country church, and the country church had a Sunday night service. And in the Sunday night service, he was preaching, and uh, there was no response. People were very quiet. And uh, so he realized, I need to change things up. So he started to get more animated. He started to bring his voice louder and make big motions with his hands. And people started to get into it a little bit at the end of the service. Uh, uh, one of the guys came up and said, man, you were really in the spirit today. And he said, thank you. But really all he was was he was louder, right? He just was trying to bring a little bit more animation. Uh, what we want today is not just animation. What we want, what I want for you and what I want for me is uh, a deeper impact with the Holy Spirit, a deeper encounter with the Holy Spirit. As we uh, begin the series, continue the series on the Holy Spirit, I do want to alert you to something that some of you may be wondering if you came by last week, maybe you noticed it this morning as you came in, right outside of our worship center, there is a, um, uh, some rocks, and you might wonder, why are those there? If you were with us about a, a month ago, we had uh, an opportunity as we thought about our vision of helping people find and follow Jesus, I gave you an opportunity to write some names on a rock of people that you want to uh, encounter God in a fresh way, or maybe for the first time. And uh, Brandy Chang put those together. I think we have a slide of it here. Uh, put those together in a, uh, a form for us to remind ourselves of, let's go to that slide, Larry. Uh, of just actually seeing, let's put that back up again. <laughs> you got to pay attention around here. Uh, so uh, just to be able to see that of people who have encountered Jesus. And so my hope as you walk by that, you might see a name that you wrote down if you were there, but it's an opportunity for us to remind ourselves of how we try to live into this vision. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to meet together and to focus our attention on your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and, and uh, move among us as we have sung and as we have heard. And Lord, that you would do a work in our lives. Each of us have different reasons and different needs at church today. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and meet them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I begin today with two questions. The first question is this. What's the best present that you've ever received? What's the best present that you have ever received? Think about that in your mind. Maybe it was an anniversary gift or a birthday gift or a graduation gift. Second question, what's the best present that you've ever given? The best gift that you've ever given? It may be something that was costly, or it may be something that was just personal and meaningful. I can think of some personal gifts I've given or means that when we give we enjoy read by Trevor just a minute ago is all could you hear the scene in Luke this person came and you got up mostly 
it compares and for a fish, you give them a snake. You give them something bad. As a father, you know, you give good gifts to your children. But then Jesus contrasts God with our human fathers. Even though that you are, know that you are, even the, if then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the ask him? In other words, the Holy Spirit, God wants the Holy Spirit to be asked for, to be experienced. That gives the Father pleasure. We're continuing this sermon series called On Tiptoe with Joy, Living the Spirit-Filled Life. And today what I want to talk about is how are you filled with the Holy Spirit and what difference does the Holy Spirit actually make in your life? This is really crucial for us if we think about joy being present in our lives. If you have your Bibles, we're going to actually look at a different passage, the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll look, start at verse 15 and 20, and as always, you can access the sermon notes on the YouVersion app. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me just remind you, if you weren't here last week, what I talked about, about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, before I get into this passage, the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person that we can have a relationship with. The Holy Spirit is the one who allows us to understand who God is. It's the one who allows us to feel the love of God. In fact, every time you have felt God's love, it's the Holy Spirit opening your mind and your heart to receive it. It's a way that we know we're children of God, as Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 16, dwelt by the Holy Spirit, that our, our body literally becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit once we decide to follow Jesus. But if you heard me last week, I talked about that you can be filled, you can actually uh, be indwelt with the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit. And some of you might be wondering, what's the distinction between being uh, indwelt with the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit? That's what this passage is here to answer for us. So Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, I'll start there. Uh, Paul writes this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, if you wonder if this is, the Bible is true, I mean, think about what's been happening in, in, our, in our country over the past you know, a few months, in particular years, with gun violence, just for example. Think about that. There's a lot of evil that's going on in the world. So we need to be very careful to live in our, our lives. And it says in verse 17, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, it kind of leaves a pregnant pause there. What is God's will? Verse 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. There's a negative command and a positive command here. Don't get drunk on wine. That's the negative command. The positive command is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a story of Billy Graham who uh, went to go preach at a church, and he was preaching at this church, and the pastor beforehand said, uh, we had a real tragic experience happen recently. Uh, there was a person who came to church drunk in our church, one of our members, so we had to excommunicate him. And so uh, Billy Graham said, wow, that's, that's, that's a strong stance. What do you do for all those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit? Because that's a command just as well in the Bible as to not get drunk with wine. Essentially, this verse, verse 18, is all about what are you going to be controlled by? What are you going to be controlled by? It's interesting. I, I went to karaoke recently. Anybody been to karaoke? All right. Anybody been to karaoke with drunk people? All right. So I'm at this karaoke event, and uh, uh, this, these two people had had a lot to drink. And they picked an Alicia Keys song. And they lived into that song. I just remember him with a microphone, and you might need to tone my microphone down, but he said, This girl is on fire! And, and literally, that was the first 30 seconds of the song. And people went, wow, woo, woo, and then they realized, we got three more minutes of this song. 
they're going to keep on going. And you just kind of like, where's the hook? You need to drag those people out of here, right? It's all about control. Control. Now, notice what the control of the Holy Spirit says. The control is speaking to one another. This is the result of the Holy Spirit, verse 19. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, out of the overflow of the Holy Spirit is you have this music in your heart. You overflow with thankfulness. And even if you look in the next verse, we're able to submit to people, to allow other people to have control over our lives. But I want to look at this positive command by Paul and give you the significance behind it because there's a lot in there. He says this in verse 18. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. How does that sound to you? Does that sound like a suggestion? There's actually four things in the original language, the Greek, that I want you to see. In other words, it's for everyone, not a select few, not the spiritual elites, but God's vision for his people is that we would be a spirit-filled and a spirit-led community, everybody. The third thing is it's passive. That I want to be open to the Holy Spirit. I said this last week. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not about getting more of God, but God getting more a hold of you. And the last thing about this verb is it's a present tense verb. In other words, This, ver, this, this sentence is simply this. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being filled. It's not a one-time occurrence. It's something that we continually seek and receive to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How does this happen? I think there's three things that are important for it to happen. First is you got to get thirsty. you got to get thirsty for more of God in your life. If you're satisfied with God you will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. You might be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, but if you don't want more of God, you are satisfied, and you can just stop listening to anything I have to say. But if you want more of God in your life, of the Spirit. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and the message puts it this way. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're hungry for God. You hunger and thirst for righteousness. I want more of God in my life. Are you satisfied with the level of God in your life? It's an important question to ask. Psalm 42 says, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. The vision of that psalm is not just, Oh, isn't that cute? There's a little deer getting a little, little water on the side. Isn't that nice? The vision of that psalm is, imagine you're in a desert, and you are thirsty, and you have no hope, but then you see an oasis. Go to the oasis to get thirsty. Second thing is, not only to get thirsty, but to get empty. To be filled with the Spirit, you must be empty of yourself. Jesus put this this way in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. 
In other words, if you are uh, full of yourself, there's no room for anybody else in your life. You need God in your life, and you need to be open. And if you, but if you're already full to the brim, it's going to be hard for God to fill you. You have to come to the end of yourself. And the third thing, according to the scripture, is simply to believe and to ask. Notice what Jesus said. I'm going to preach on this more next week. In John chapter 7, he says, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. What's the condition? The condition is simply belief. Whoever believes in me. I can think of in my life at least two times when I felt a filling of the Holy Spirit. The first was when I was about 19 years old. I was at a place of crisis in my life and discouragement, and I needed God in a big way. And I remember late on a Friday night, and it was late at night, and I was in my dorm room, and I was praying, God, I need help. I, I'm desperate. And I remember something happening. I can't quantify it. It was a spiritual experience, but I felt something happening in my life. The result was afterwards, I felt a desire to read the Bible, which I never had the desire to read the Bible before. I had a desire to listen to Christian music. I wasn't interested in that stuff before. I had a desire to go to church. I wasn't super excited about going to church before, but I started to go to church. Something happened as a result of that, just because I was desperate. A second time, as I think back over my life, I remember going to a, a service. It was an ordinary service. I, I don't remember anything that was happening. I don't remember the music. I don't remember the preacher. All I remember was where I was sitting. And I remember sitting there, and I remember something happening, and I'm kind of a feeler kind of person, and I remember it feeling like, you know what, you're at the beach and you have waves, you know, kind of hitting your feet? I felt like that, like waves of God's love. And I just needed it. I didn't even know how thirsty I was. And it was so, it was after the service ended, I didn't want to leave. I just felt like I couldn't move. And it's not all just about having some sort of, you know, epiphany or that type of thing. It's simply saying, I need more of you in my life. How do you know ultimately that you are filled with the Spirit? This is where different denominations answer that question differently. Some believe that you can, you know, once you're filled with the Spirit, you speak in tongues and whatnot. That was not my experience. Um, I can show you some scripture about that, but uh, that wasn't my experience. What's most important is that you are filled with a love for people. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that passage we read at weddings is, is not about that. It's actually about the gift of the Spirit to love those people in our lives. To love those people that love us and who are also difficult. Galatians chapter 5 says, the fruit of the Spirit's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the way you can tell you're a Spirit-filled Christian is simply that you uh, have fruit in your life. In this little book from the 1950s, I told you this is where uh, this title came from. Um, J.T. Siemens, he writes this, To be filled with the Spirit means that the child of God has opened up every room in the house to the Spirit's free entry, and more has handed over the whole bunch of keys into his hand. It means that the Spirit is not only a guest, but is the master of the house. So think about that. Imagine somebody came over to your house and you invite them and you, maybe you have a guest room in your house and you welcome them. And what do you say as a person? You say generally, uh, welcome, you know, make this your home. You're welcome to do whatever you want here, right? If you have a guest. It's a whole nother thing to imagine taking the keys out of your pocket and saying, this is your house now. Literally, you can do whatever you want. You know, even when you're staying in somebody's house and you're a guest, you still got to kind of, you feel, you know, feel like do anything you want. 
But imagine you had the keys. And that's what J.T. Siemens is saying there is allow God to have complete ownership of your life. Not just part of your life, but all of your life. To be led by the Spirit however he would like to lead you. One last story. Um, Being led by the Spirit means sometimes you do things that are unconventional. Um, There's a guy by the name of Tony Campolo who tells this story. He uh, did a lot of work in Haiti and uh, with poor people, and he had to stay, uh, because of danger, he had to stay in a, a hotel. And he was going to this hotel. Uh, it was late at night after dinner, and he, it was about maybe 8 or 9 o'clock at night, and he saw these three 15-year-old girls out front. They were trying to look as sexy as they could, and they propositioned him. This was like in the 80s, maybe 90s. Said, Mr., you could have me for $10 for the whole night. And his heart was cut because he's a parent. And he saw these three girls, and he, he just, you know, was heartbroken. He started to walk to the hotel, but then he felt the Holy Spirit speak to him. And he turned around to those girls, and he said, can I have all three of you? In one hour. And he went into the, to the, the um, hotel. He went to the concierge. And the concierge person said, I want you to make as many banana splits as you could make. I want you to find every Disney uh, DVD movie that you can find, and I want you to bring them to room 210. And the girls were here, and they had banana splits, and they watched Disney movies, and they fell asleep on the bed. And it was late, late that night, and uh, he was overlooking them, and they were asleep. He, and he felt, um, he was talking to God about their lives, and he, he felt like, um, what good am I going to, what good is this, God? I mean, is this really going to make a difference in their lives? Why, I mean, they're going to be out on the street this next, you know, tomorrow night. And he felt the Spirit say, you know, uh, Tony, you reminded them of what it means to be a little girl and to have innocence. And that will not be taken from them. Being led by the Spirit means to do things unconventional. But it's a decision that I want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. I long to be filled with the Spirit. And it's something that it's not just a one-time occurrence. It's something we have to continually seek each day to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So the band is going to come. We're going to play a a song and I'm going to give you an opportunity um, just to lean into that. The song is, Lord, I Need You. So this is an opportunity for you to receive and ask God for the Holy Spirit. Are you dry in your life? Do you need the Holy Spirit's presence in your life? This is an opportunity to do that. If you would like to come to the altar to pray, you're welcome to do that. But I've been praying for you this week, experience with the Holy Spirit. It's a journey that we're all trying to live into. But the Father longs to impart the joy of the Holy Spirit in your life today, even this morning. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for your presence here. We all have different needs in our lives today. Lord, we all come with different things, but most of all, I pray that you would increase our thirst for you, our desire to have more, and to really give you greater access of our lives to you. That can be a scary thing, but it can also be such a wonderful thing. So we thank you, Holy Spirit.
And in this time of worship, we pray that you would visit us in a special way. Fear. With joy, with power, with love, which comes from you. Will you do that even this morning? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.